From behind the passenger and driver's seat, all the way back to the rear cargo area, you have approximately 157 inches to work with. That comes right back to the raised lip right here, which is the extent of your build area. Between the wheel wells, you have 56 inches. The width of the van is 73 and 3 fourths. 73 and 3 fourths at the bottom. At the top rib, I would say you have 73 and 1 quarter inches. The narrowest part at the top rib, I would say, is 68 and one half inches. The step up to the driver and passenger seats. I would say is approximately six inches, five and three quarter to six inches. And then this area actually increases, it's at an angle. The side door, the distance you have to the side door is 71 and a half inches. And the width of the side door is 48 inches usable because the sliding door doesn't open all the way but the opening is 51 inches wide but 48 inches is the maximum space that you have to work with the rib depth if you place the panel across the two runners in the back of the van, you would have three and one fourths inches approximately for area for insulation. And that's in the middle section. The largest area on the bottom for insulation 
would be about three and a quarter inches would be the greatest area. The van walls do move in and out a little bit. So I would say that you basically have two and three quarters of an inches continuously throughout this bottom section for insulation. Now with that in mind, let's move back up to the top. Here in the middle section, the space between the rib and your wall would be one and a half inches. Moving up to the top, up at the top, you end up with two and a half inches for insulation. And you may taper that a little bit smaller as you move up to the top of the roof. Now on the ceiling, the ribs for the ceiling are a little bit thinner. Let's check that out. So if I place my rule rigidly across from those ribs, I end up measuring one inch on the bottom section of the roof rib. So you have a minimum of one inch for insulation on your roof, unless you're going to put some wood lower to provide more insulation. But right now across these beams, you have one inch of space. Behind the muffler is section 1. This section is notable because you do not have the brake cable in the way. This makes it an ideal location for the water tank. That section measures 29 inches long by 12 inches wide with no changes to the vehicle. If the little metal drop down is cut, it becomes 13 inches wide by 23 inches long without going over the heat shield that is near the driver's side. The entire area is 44 inches long, 12 inches wide, by 6 inches if the heat shield is removed. The muffler drops down approximately 6 inches in this section. Moving to the back of the van is section 2. This section is split up by the emergency brake cable. The muffler is down about 7.5 inches here. The passenger side area is 21 and a half inches by 15 inches. The muffler cable hinge is in the way slightly. On the driver side of section 2, the area measures 22 and a half by 16 and a half. This is another good place for a gray tank or water tank. Moving back to section 3. The driver's side area is 21 inches by 15 inches, but you have the muffler in the way. The passenger side is 21 and a half inches by 15 and 3 quarter inches, but you would need to cut the bracket. Without cutting the bracket, you lose an inch, so you're at 21 and a half inches by 14 and 3 fourths inches. Now to section 4. In section 4 the driver's side still has the muffler. That area is 15 inches by 7 inches. The stabilizer bar gets in the way so it's really not usable space. On the passenger side of section 4 you have 20 and 1 half inches by 7 inches. Still not very usable for a water tank. Section 5 on the driver's side provides 13 and a half inches by 10 inches. The section on the passenger side provides 21 and a half inches by 9 and a half inches. 
not very usable space. Section 6 is a large area, 36 inches by 13 and a half inches. That is if you cut the bracket. It's only 11 and a half inches wide if you don't cut the bracket. This is a good large area for a gray tank or a water tank. But remember, this is behind the rear axle, and the ProMaster is a front wheel drive vehicle. It's my opinion it's better to center the heavy loads in the vehicle, and your water tanks will be very heavy loads. Placing a heavy water tank behind the rear axle may not be a good idea. Moving up to the roof, on top the ProMaster 3500 extended van has 10 roof mounts. A bracket fits over these roof mounts. These roof mounts are located above the reinforced sections of the walls of the ProMaster. In front there is a 58 and 5 8 inches between the mounts center to center. After that there is a consistent 28 inches between the next three sets of mounts. The width throughout is a consistent 58 and one half inches. The full width of the flat section of the roof is 64 and a half inches. Hopefully these dimensions help you out with your van build. I know this is not a very popular video because only a few people those planning out their build before delivery in the van will find it useful. If you made it this far in the video, please click the thumbs up and subscribe. And thank you for watching.